station. This is WTOP Radio. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear. Welcome on board the International Space Station. Wow, this is really cool. This has uh, not been done before. We are talking live here on WTOP with the International Space Station, and we uh, say hello to Commander Terry Virts, now in command. Congratulations, Commander. We are uh, happy to hear that you are from Maryland. You're a local guy. Well, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. And I am a local, uh, born and raised in Maryland, and hello to all the folks down there in Maryland and D.C. and Virginia. Uh, I've been watching. We take a look whenever we have a pass, and it looks like it's been a pretty cold and white winter so far. We are uh, watching you on uh, NASA TV, and we're streaming it on our website at WTOP.com. And it's, uh, it's really wonderful to talk to you and also to uh, flight engineer Samantha Cristo Ferretti, who joins us. Uh, she's an Italian astronaut. Welcome to you as well, and thank you for talking with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us. It's wonderful to be here. Great to hear from you both. Uh, Terry, we know this is not your, your first uh, mission on the space station. We want to know uh, how has it changed over time? Does it get easier for you? Tell us about it. Well, it, living here in space absolutely gets easier. The first few weeks that you're here, your, your body's still getting used to weightlessness. You're still learning how to float and how to move around, and you're learning the space station where things are located. And so the first few weeks can, can definitely be an adjustment period. But then um, it seems like somewhere between the one- and two-month period, you kind of hit your stride. You are adapted. You, you understand how to float. And um, there was one day I was actually trying to remember what gravity felt like. It, it's weird that your body adjusts so completely to being weightless, but it's a pretty cool process. We have a lot of questions, especially from uh, school kids who are uh, listening in their classrooms this morning. In fact, uh, Mrs. Balzar's fifth grade class, Andrew, asked, how do you sleep at night if every 45 minutes the sun rises and sets? Well, Andrew, that's a great question. And luckily, we don't have a window in our, in our crew quarters where we sleep. So we shut the door, turn off the lights, and in our small crew quarters where our sleeping bag is, there's no light, so your body uh, just thinks it's dark and thinks it's time to sleep. And um, I actually sleep really well. Uh, oftentimes it's a busy day, so you don't get a, a large amount of sleep. But when I am asleep, I sleep very well, uh, thankfully, because we close the windows and don't see any sunlight. As you can imagine, we get a, a lot of questions about the food that you are eating. I know that there are uh, cargo supplies that, that bring you uh, uh, fresh food every so often. What do you get to eat? Do you get uh, to have some of your favorite foods? Tell us about what you have and uh, how often do you get a fresh food? Terry and I are, are very different in terms of taste and the, the stuff we like to eat. But uh, up here, we definitely both have been enjoying uh, the few times that we have received fresh food. And that really happens uh, whenever there is a new cargo vehicle that comes up here. So that happened um, early in our mission when a progress vehicle came. And then um, in uh, last January, we had a Dragon arriving and then a progress again. Um, next week, we'll have a Soyuz, although I don't think there's space for, food in the, for fresh food in the Soyuz. But we'll definitely get some more fresh food um, coming up in the next weeks when the next dragon will come and and the reason is that we do not have uh, a, a fridge we have a, a little um, refrigerator up here but it's not enough to keep um, to keep uh, fresh food um, you know for, for a long time so most of the food that we eat usually is uh, thermally stabilized so that it can be shelf stable for a long time and we can keep it stored in here for months or even over a year um, or it's uh, dehydrated and so we plug it into our water dispenser, we plug the pouch into the water dispenser and uh, magically uh, with add in the water it turns into food that we would recognize and there is mm. a great variety of food for all uh, uh, tastes and flavors. Mm -hmm. Commander Wirtz, uh, we have some questions from students at Oakland Mills Middle School, which I think is a, a familiar name to you. Um, one of the questions uh, is uh, f from one of the kids who's asking about uh, being away from your family for so long. And I guess for both of you, how do you deal with, with being away and are you able to communicate with them? Well, that's a great question. Um, yes, Oakland Mills. I'm a I'm a Scorpion and graduated from there in 1985. Uh, 
had a great time there. What, a, what an awesome place. But it is probably the toughest thing is being separated from your family, not only for the six months here that we're in space, but also for the several years beforehand that we were in training, we were gone a lot. And so it's tough. Uh, they're the real heroes. Everybody sees the astronauts in space and wants to talk to us, but it's the families that provide us support that allow us to do this. And they're the real heroes in that. That's a great question. Commander Vertz, uh, we have enjoyed uh, the many pictures of uh, uh, the baseball fields that you have uh, been sending back. And so a number of folks that we know you are from Maryland, but I uh, have been uh, told to ask, are you a Nats fan or an Orioles fan? <laughs> I can, I, Samantha says she can answer that one. She's a base. She's become a baseball expert. But I'll tell you what. I, what I'm rooting for is for the Orioles and the Nationals to be playing at the end of October this year. That's uh, that. What I'd really love to see is a game seven between those guys uh, right around Halloween time. Um, and I, with the Nationals pitching staff this year, that definitely looks like they may be playing late in October. And with the Orioles coming off that 96 win season, you know they have a great shot at it too. So of course, when I grew up, it was in the 70s and 80s, and the Orioles were going to the World Series and playoffs all the time. So I'm, I'm a homegrown, uh, lifelong Orioles fan for sure. We've got a few questions for you guys. Uh, by the way, that was a good political answer. That's a great Not answer, only a commander, but a politician. That's a great uh, answer. From the uh, Gun Anavim kindergarten class in uh, the Jewish Primary Day School. Kids uh, are studying the solar system there and space exploration. And they want to know, I guess from each of you, how long does it take to train to become an astronaut? And tell us a little bit about what you're seeing up there. How beautiful are the galaxies and what are the colors like? In a way, you train all of your life to become an astronaut because um, before you can actually train to go to space, you need to be selected as an astronaut by a space agency like NASA in the case of Terry or the European Space Agency in my case. And to be ready to be a valid candidate at some point of your career in your life, you really have to start working at it when you are you know, in, in school already and you're learning your basic math and writing and, and science and then you go on to college and um, you know m most astronauts have some kind of technical or scientific background many of us are military pilots um, so you kind of start on your on your career and uh, and you try to be really good at it and uh, the key of course is to be passionate about what you do um, and then eventually one day you'll hopefully be a, a good candidate for to become an astronaut and then before you can actually come on the international space station you have to train specifically for several for several more years um, and in terms of uh, what we see and what the view is up here, um, we are not really equipped for uh, um, astronomical observation. Uh, the, the big windows that we have that are on the cupola actually look down towards the Earth. So that's our, our, our biggest uh, you know, spectacle. The, the greatest views that we have are mainly from, from the Earth, you know, just seeing the continents and the oceans and the glaciers and the mountains and all the different colors and textures. All of that is just, it's just magnificent and it's ever changing and, and always a surprise. Um, of course, we also do see the stars um, and uh, sometimes really beautiful, beautiful phenomena. Like right now, I was seeing one, um, auroras. Now we're seeing the southern lights, which are even more impressive than the northern lights that we used to see earlier. Um, they're like three-dimensional. You almost like fly through them. So it's just, just beautiful. And then, of course, as you mentioned before, uh, 16 times a day we are treated to probably the best show of nature, which is uh, the sunrise and, and the sunsets on the Earth's horizon. Amazing. Uh, several students have asked the question about your free time. What do you do to uh, to pass the time? And, and do you uh, do you become concerned about hitting a wall in the space station, passing the time? Uh, that's a good question. And to be honest, I think for our first four months here in space, we haven't had a lot of free time. Uh, the weekends are generally mo we don't have as much scheduled work, but there seems like there's always something to do. And um, yesterday, two days ago, our crewmates came back to Earth on a Soyuz, and we had yesterday off as a, as a day to sleep shift to get our schedule back normal. And that was r really nice to have some time off, make some phone calls home, and uh, go through some emails and just rest for a day. But it seems like most days, even on the weekends, there is a, there's, you know, there's always something to do. So we try and pace ourselves and 
Um, six months seems to be a pretty good time. If folks are able to work at a really good pace for six months, and then um, there comes a time when it's you know it's time to go back to earth. But we're not there. I think we're definitely enjoying our our time here, and it, it still feels like there's a lot we want to get done in our remaining two months. Well, that is just incredible information with uh, Commander Terry Virts in command of the space station from Columbia, Maryland, also with uh, flight engineer Samantha Cristoforetti speaking to us aboard the International Space Station here on WTOP. Thank you both for taking the time. We really appreciate it. This was uh, an unprecedented opportunity for us, yeah. and we appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. It was great talking to you all. And uh, hopefully I'll be back to Earth in time for that Orioles and Nationals World Series. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WTOP radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Euro News. Station, this is Euro News. How do you hear me? We hear you. It's a little bit soft, but we can hear you. Okay. Hi, Terry. Buongiorno, Samantha. Thank you very much for uh, joining us on Euronews. I would like to start by asking how you feel about the other three crew members returning to Earth. As the next crew will arrive at the end of March, do you feel a bit lonely up there in space? You know, it was it was it was sad seeing those guys uh, leave. We were together for four months. They're they're very good friends, and um, we really enjoyed our time together. So it was sad seeing them leave. Uh, we're not too lonely though. We have me, Samantha, and Anton are together now, and this is an interesting two-week time where we'll have the space station ourselves before our next crew arrives. But I do want to say happy birthday to Sasha. Today's his birthday. Uh, Alexander Samokutyev, happy birthday. Senor Marsdenia. In the first to four months of your mission, you have carried out some scientific experiments. Samantha, could you tell us more about this and explain the importance of these tests? Yes, of course, uh, scientific research is the main reason why, why we are up here on the International Space Station. Um, the space station is an outstanding laboratory that allows us to do research in this very special condition, which is microgravity or weightlessness, um, which is very intriguing in many scientific fields because uh, by doing scientific observations in microgravity, you can observe and measure and quantify phenomena that otherwise you would not be able maybe not even to notice and certainly not to study in detail in the effect, in the presence of the effects of gravity on Earth. And uh, some of those fields are um, human science, of course, biology, um, human physiology, um, but also material science, fluid physics. Um, and of course, the um, space station is also a platform for some um, experiments that are actually observations of the universe. Uh, I, I've done a lot of uh, things in the last few months, so it's, it's, uh, it's going to be difficult to name them all. Um, but I can mention the few things that I have been working on recently and that I will be working on soon, which are two uh, European Space Agency experiments, airway monitoring and uh, triple looks. And uh, both of them actually have been a little bit troublesome. Um, and I actually like to say this because, uh, you know, we, you don't want to give the impression that in science everything works right off the bat and immediately. Sometimes it is hard. It takes several trials. It takes a little bit of trial and error. It takes adjustments. It takes learning. And that has definitely been the case, for example, on this experiment, airway monitoring, which is a very intriguing scientific protocol that for the first time is going to study how the gaseous exchange in the lungs is affected by both the weightlessness, microgravity, and even reduced pressure. Actually, Terry and I were locked up in the airlock for several hours at reduced pressure to, to do some of those measurements. And then uh, one which is uh, going to come up as soon as we have fixed uh, some uh, issues we're having with the biolab rack is triple looks, which is uh, another intriguing scientific protocol which is aimed at studying the effect of weightlessness on the immune system, on the behavior of some specific immune cells 
that are involved whenever our body fights disease. Terry, another goal of this mission was to prepare the station for the arrival of future private spaceships. For NASA, it will mean once again having direct access to space. How important will it be having a partnership with private companies for space exploration? Well, it's, it's been a big part of our mission so far, both doing spacewalks and doing work inside uh, to get ready for the future vehicles that will be coming to the space station. And it's very important for NASA, our way forward, the way that we're going to launch astronauts from Florida once again to the space station is going to be on uh, both a Boeing capsule and a SpaceX capsule starting sometime in the next probably two years and we're really looking forward to that it's it's a important part of the space station program it's an important logistical thing that needs to be solved in order to get people to the station and back so it's very important and what comes after the international space station once its mission is over how do we ensure the presence of humans in space Well, that's a great question. Uh, the plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is, that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, via, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to. And we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. Samantha, according to a recent survey based on research on internet, you are the most popular Italian woman in the world. I had Monica Bellucci and Laura Pausini. Does it mean that science may be more attractive than showbiz? <laughs> well, uh, um, I'm not sure that that was a service conducted according to the um, most scientific and statistical criteria, <laughs> but uh, um, just to take it for, for the fun that I, I'm sure it was meant to be. Um, I'm certainly happy that uh, a, a person like me, who is uh, really nobody as, as a person, but uh, has the privilege of being the representative of something really special, which is uh, um, you know, the, the space station program, having this incredible uh, technological, scientific uh, achievement, which is really a testament of what uh, humanity can achieve when we decide to work together and put together our best minds all over the world to do something which is really amazing. And, uh, and of course, it's, it, it's a testament to the, the scientific research that is conducted here and all the technological development, which is um, really just, uh, you know, uh, ensuring that we um, do all the steps that are necessary for a further exploration in the future. So in, uh, in that sense, of course, I, uh, I, I am happy that the <laughs> about the outcome of this survey, of which, again, I, I'm sure it was meant in, in, in good fun. Okay, just a quick question sent in by our social media followers. In around two months, you will come back to Earth. What did you guys miss the most during your stay in space? Well, that's a great question. You know, living here is, is very pleasant. We have everything that we need. Uh, the food is good. We have, we're here with good friends. And so life here in space is pretty good. Um, the thing I think we miss the most is people, you know, missing our families on Earth, missing our friends, getting back to see folks. Uh, that's the thing that you really miss more than anything. Another thing that I'll throw out there, we were just talking about this, is weather. We don't have weather here. and We were, we were just talking about rain and and snow and, and what it's like to have on Earth. So that is something that I miss, and I'm looking forward to experiencing a little bit of weather, hopefully a lot of sun and, and warmth, but, you know, other, other rain and snow and that kind of stuff is something that we don't get here. Okay, to finish, I would like to ask how you remember on the station actor Leonard Nimoy, and was your interest in space inspired by Star Trek and Mr. Spock, just like so many people? Uh, 
we're going to have to ask you to say that question again one more time, please. I would like uh, to ask how you remember you remember it on the station actor Leonel Nimoy, and was your interest in space inspired by Star Trek and Mr. Spock? Okay. <laughs> Okay, now I understand. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, definitely, I was uh, as a big tracker growing up. Uh, I, I was really, really, really a, a big fan, um, and uh, I do think that it has played a, a part in in helping to in helping me to to show me this path uh, to to help me become aware that this is what I wanted to do. Um, you know, be, become an astronaut, travel to space, and and play a little bit my part in uh, in this human adventure of. Uh, of space exploration, which is just you know one long journey, and 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 one day maybe or you know I, I believe so a, a Star Trek reality will uh, will be will be will become true. So um, I uh, I really felt like uh, I had an obligation to to honor uh, Leonard Nimoy when he passed away recently. Thank you very much for having been with us. Enjoy the rest of your mission. And just as Mr. Spock would have said, live long and prosper. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And hello to all the folks down there in Europe. We just had a beautiful Passover Europe this morning. It looked like a sunny day uh, in a lot of places. And, and we'll see you back on Earth in a few months. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.